Hi guys, welcome back to another episode on this channel, Narcon. On this channel, we believe in educating ourselves in relation to the narcissistic personality disorder in order to heal, to move forward and to avoid this personality type going forward. If you find value in the content, please consider subscribing and I say that with gratitude. Guys, today I'd like to discuss the female narcissist in all her manifestations. This character is fairly diabolical, has the capacity to do a lot of human damage and cause a lot of destruction, chaos and pain to a lot of people. I've identified two kind of types of presentations of the female narcissist. One type I would see as being more overt, more flaunting themselves, overly confident, pushy, um, highly sexual, highly competitive. The other type I would have identified as more quietly spoken, uh, moves stealthily, a person of good deeds, always remembering people's birthdays, always presenting with gifts and with a strong personal agenda underlying each act of kindness. So guys, whether you find yourselves in a relationship with this female narcissist, wondering whether you're with a female narcissist or have been, whether it's in a single sex relationship or a heterosexual relationship, the characteristics remain the same. So let's get into a list of behavior patterns that you will experience. And the combination of these patterns will help you identify whether you were with a narcissist or not. I mean, different people can display some of these characteristics and not necessarily be a full blown narcissist. But let's get into it because there is a common denominator and these are what I find to be the common denominators of this heinous individual. The spirit of the person would be in the spirit of Jezebel and if anyone knows their Bible well they'll know what I'm talking about or if you don't if you want to look it up look Jezebel up and you'll get a little story about the different types of characteristics of Jezebel. So the first way I would identify a female narcissist is that they're highly sexual, that they use, not that they, not that they will be sexual with people, but they're, they flaunt their sexuality, so to speak. They flaunt their femininity and they put great personal store on their appearance. And this can be in relation to makeup, in relation to designer clothing, looking expensive, looking very feminine, looking good all the time. They're often hugely obsessed with their looks because their looks and the way they present themselves are their currency to getting what they want. Oftentimes we feel so sorry, particularly as women, when we see the female narcissist in action, we feel so sorry for our male relations, our friends, our brother, our father, our son, whoever this female narcissist sets her sights on, she more than often will achieve her agenda and her aim of getting her hooks into the person. Men are particularly vulnerable when the very sexual and very feminine side is produced to them and the person actually targets this person not, not all men will fall for this, I don't mean to generalise, but it is a hard thing to resist when one of these female narcissists sets her sights on you. She will make you feel, and women alike, she will make you feel like her hero. She'll often come in as very weak and in needing of help, but present herself in a very sexualized way, in a very feminine way will make you feel like a hero for helping her and will even use that as a modus operandi to get in with you and then possibly thank you with sex. 
So we'll get you hooked on the dynamic of you helping, you being the hero, and also the sexual reward will come into play. So guys, leave in the comments if you've come across this individual and found it devastating to watch like your brother or friend be manipulated when you can see clearly what's actually going on. Guys, sometimes, sometimes you'll have the blinders on when this type presents. So listen to your, listen to your female folk because we can often see this possibly as you can see the male narcissist when they target um, a female in your, in your family or your, your social circle. So the other thing that they are, are highly competitive. They're highly competitive, particularly if they have a target in mind. And again, this is more, more or less involving the intimate relationship. But if they set their sights on someone, they will ostracize any of the competition. In other words, they'll either tell them straight out to get lost that this is their man or this is their woman. Or they will um, do a smear campaign on whoever is their competition to the target of their focus or to the general social circle that you're actually in. They'll also be blatant and brazen enough when you're actually out with your current partner, maybe to come up and chat to them in front of you, nearly stand in front of you and flirt with them. They have no problem doing this. And in a way, the way society has kind of the, the rules of etiquette in society, if you like to call them that, have changed. I do feel sorry for younger people because it seems to be more acceptable that there's this kind of transactional interaction and com competition in relationships where before maybe good manners would have precluded the person from actually coming in and standing between yourself and your current partner in order for them to flirt with them. Now it seems the female narcissist is more accepted in society as being the type of I will get my man, woman, if that makes sense. So highly competitive. And that brings us into um, overstepping boundaries. What they see, they go after. And regardless of the person that they're after being in a relationship or not, married with children is no object to them if they decide that they want that person and that person is going to benefit them. Boundaries and other societal norms um, don't matter, to totally and utterly don't matter. Um, okay, so when you're in a relationship with a female narcissist, they have an agenda. They're very agenda orientated. What they want, they will get. And then when they get what they want, they want to totally control it, like all narcissists. But the female narcissists, particularly in the heterosexual relationship, basically want in a man, someone who adores them, someone who will make them totally number one, someone who is going to be more like their personal assistant, someone who they can flaunt out in society as a trophy, uh, someone that they, someone that has money very often. These, these female narcissists are highly materialistic um, will often overspend, will be often obsessed with designer labels. And again, if you like your designer labels, that doesn't make you a female narcissist. I'm just saying that money is no object. They feel they deserve the best because they are the best. And this isn't just high self-esteem. This is entitlement and lack of accountability in relation to money spending. This is a, an omnipresence, a godlike feeling that they deserve better than anyone else, not just the same as anyone else. They will expect their partner to provide for them in every way. They will expect their partner to praise them when they are out. They will expect their partner to treat them like royalty. And if the partner doesn't do that, the partner will get punished when they are back 
um, away from people back in the, the home or whatever, or in the car leaving an event. That partner has to make them, add to them, make them look like royalty, make them look like a superstar. That partner can not take their attention away from the female narcissist in a social setting and certainly not spend very much time with anyone that could be considered competition to the female narcissist, as in another female. Even if the narcissist, sorry, if the narcissist's partner spends too much time talking with someone who they wouldn't be sexual with, um, the female narcissist will get jealous of that, will uh, one, be threatened by it because their partner may be getting validation from an outside source and they want to keep that partner isolated and totally under control and the focus has to be on the female narcissist. The female narcissist is avaricious. Can you, is that a word? Avaricious. Greedy. Greedy for every moment of attention from their target unless the female narcissist wants to take time out to flirt with other potential upgrades in relation to partners. This is a diabolical, this is a diabolical type of woman. This woman would stand over 10 people's bodies to get what she wants. This, this woman talks about herself a lot this woman often is, is, isn't accepted by her female brethren because the females in a group recognize that there's something off with this woman, that this woman isn't a true sister, that this woman is totally out for herself, that this woman is a manipulator of the opposite sex. And this will lead on to another point. This woman to get what she want will often claim bisexuality. So guys, those of you, those of you who are into the same sex um, relationships, please be aware of this. And um, this has come up quite a bit in coaching where, where same sex couples have had an experience of a female narcissist who claims she's wanted to dabble in that side of herself or that that is her true nature and it's not her true nature at all. She's just been a ca camelon to gain supply. We often say that narcissists change their character or customize their character to gain supply from a person. They will actually change their sexuality in order to gain supply from a person. Nothing is out of bounds for a narcissist. They're, they have no true identity. So they're capable of doing anything to get supply. They're capable of any lie to get supply. So be really, really, really aware, particularly later on in life, if someone comes to you with this story, and that goes for the male narcissist as well. Bisexuality is a big thing with narcissists, particularly later in life, if they feel that they need more options in their supply chain. So guys, we said, um, yeah, they will isolate, they will isolate you big time. They'll isolate you because isolating you will stop you from seeing who they are. And when your family then may be worried about you and the fact that you're so absorbed in this female narcissist, narcissistic partner, and everything that this female narcissistic partner wants. And the female narcissistic partner will often make a lot of trouble within the partner's family, will often set you against your family um, in order for her to have more control over you. And the family get very worried about this, family get very concerned about this, but if they do talk to the partner at an early or mid stage of the relationship, the partner has been so brainwashed by the brilliance of this female narcissist and the sexuality and the sex offered by the female narcissist that they cannot see the wood for the trees. 
The female narcissist controls their partner with sex. The female narcissist will withdraw sex as a punishment to their partner. The female narcissist uses the silent treatment as a very effective tool against their partner and this can be coupled with sexual withdrawal and they can maintain that for quite a num quite a long time to bring the partner back under control the partner getting under control may often be expected to produce expensive gifts and to totally capitulate to what the female narcissist wants it's all about the female narcissist's agenda, where you live, how you dress, um, what job you're going to take, what holidays you're going to go on. So that's the more outwardly flashy female narcissist who can also be quite obnoxious in settings like restaurants or in shops where there are any underlings in their mind people that serve them are going to be treated really, really badly so that the people that serve them know how important this female narcissist is. This is actually coming from an inferiority complex, but that presents in the female narcissist as a hugely overblown superiority complex. The other type of presentation with the female narcissist can be the quieter more godly type of person going around doing good deeds, um, maintaining a real facade of being a very super good person, a super nice person, a super sweet person who is morally highly above everybody else and holds themselves in that light and people are expected to kowtow, to give great thanks and to also speak about this person in a very highly respectful way. They thrive on the respect and the facade and the mask of being this person but at home will be a total nightmare eventually they'll start off very nicely but it'll be their agenda and what they want going forward and they have a very cold and coercive way of controlling the person that they're with because they'll present very good reasons for doing what they do and they will present it as having a very high moral stance and will twist morality to suit their agenda. And their partner will be on the back foot. Their partner will realize over time that they have no say in the relationship whatsoever. And that it is totally on this woman's terms. And this woman is capable of leaving the partner very coldly and calculatedly making an exit plan that, that includes possibly wiping that partner out financially. When someone else presents themselves as a more perfect partner for this female narcissist, the female narcissist will, I think it's like the scorpion, is it that spider or scorpion insect that mates, that kills their partner or kills the other insect after mating, they will give you a scorpion sting that will leave you reeling and it often drives men to the brink of suicide because they have been hooked in, enticed in, worked to the nth degree and then they will be thrown away at the flick of a hand once the next potential partner comes along. Now I know all narcissists of both sex are capable of doing this the female seems to do it with a particularly nasty sting. So guys, the female narcissist is also very adept at the smear campaign in presenting as the poor little woman, the meek woman, and will also dangerously use physical abuse as a, first of all, will induce you nearly to physical abuse will nearly cause the reactive abuse that will appear like physical abuse if you're not driven to actually getting into a fight with this 
individual. And even if you've never touched the female narcissist, she will claim things like that in the smear campaign to further destroy you. So be very, very, very wary. The female narcissist uses the speed of light to get you into a relationship. The female narcissist will use two tools, one marriage and two pregnancy to hook you. So guys, be really, really careful when someone, a woman comes at you. I'm saying this to both men and women. When a woman comes at you who's highly sexualized, who uses and is obsessed with her appearance, even if it's the godly like female narcissist, she will be very concerned with her appearance because that is their currency. Be very, very aware if they are very quick to try and engage you in big lifetime commitments. These are deadly creatures. Guys, I think that's about it. Um, I'm just checking my list there. Yeah, I think that's about it for now. Um, they're also what we term, what we have always termed, I suppose, in society, social climbers and gold diggers. They come in that package as well. And that's, I think, all I have to say about the female narcissist. I hope it's been of help in identifying the, the kind of type and the way that they will go on in relationships. If you have any other identifiers for female narcissists, please leave them in the comments. Have a blessed day and I will see you again soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.